since uh, Tim Spadoni is no longer with us as vice president, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, would you, Susan, uh, take a roll call? Yes. I'm going to just go in order of the pictures. Karen? Here. Uh, Diane? Diane, unmute. Uh, yeah, okay. I think she indicated she's here. She's here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Carolyn? Here. Great. Okay, the next on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. And I have a real set of flags here. So if you would please arise to say the Pledge of Allegiance with me, I'd appreciate it. When you're all ready, we'll start. I pledge allegiance. And if you would join me with me, please unmute. United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty for, all. for all. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, you can take your seats again and we'll proceed. Um, first thing on our agenda is approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of August 19th, 2020? Motion. Okay, motion Linda, is there a second? Me. Okay, Patty. that was Diane. Um, all right, are there any um, comments or corrections to the minutes? I have one, or are you going in order of something, of some sort? Um, you're the only one I he I'm hearing from right now, so if you would like to speak, Carolyn, go ahead. Okay, thank you, it is page three. Um, and it's the Thunder Public Commons third paragraph. Um, I um, would like to amend the minutes to include the remainder of, of Ms. Lemke's statement, uh, which was, if we edit, uh, if we edit removing errors, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, so that's what I would like to have added. Um, Can I repeat it more Would you say that? I'm, I'm not sure I heard you. Uh, would you say well, that again? Sure. Surely. I would like to amend by adding, um, if we edit removing errors, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That would be the second sentence for Ms. Lemke's statement. You're, you want to add, if we edit removing errors? Yes, I don't think there's anything wrong. So that was the rest of her statement. Mm. Um, I, I don't remember that, but I'm going to ask the person who made the first and the second to uh, excuse uh, to uh, if ask if they agree or don't agree with the motion to amend. And oh, but first I would ask Ms. Lemke, do you remember saying anything like that since this uh, statement was attributed to you? I, I do. I, I did say that, but I don't think it needs to be added. I think the single sentence says the important point is we have no legal obligation to post those videos. That was the important part. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, I have asked the first and second uh, motion if they wish to uh, agree to that uh, change to their motion or not. Can, um, I'm first, but can you just restate the whole sentence? I'm just confused on everything that needs to be changed. Nothing. I'm just adding a sentence. After her word transparency, she said, if we edit, Removing an error, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And to be clear, the error I'm talking about is Tim sharing his screen in error and are taking his screen, you know, not making, not publicizing things that he posted accidentally to the meeting. Okay. So I'll leave, uh, Linda, I think um, you made the motion, right? I think it, um, I'm, as it's stated, it's clear on what was said. So I don't think anything needs to be added. I think it's 
actually perfect just the way it is. Okay. All right. Since uh, we don't have the agreement of at least one of the people who made the motion, either the first or the second, uh, or we don't have both of them agreeing, the motion stands. And would you call the roll, Susan Lemke? Now, this Karen? is to approve the minutes as written. Okay. Karen? Yes. Uh, Diane? Diane, you're on mute. Yes. Sorry. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. And Carolyn? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, we are at the public comment section of our meeting. Uh, do we have any individuals who indicated they wanted to present public comment? I did not get any advance public comments, but I see hands up from Tisha Doughty Ashcroft and Stephen Yassel. So I'm gonna I'll let Tisha talk first. Okay. Hi there. Um, I have noticed that Sue Wilsey has not been present for several meetings. And um, I know you can't respond why, but the fact that she is not uh, attending meetings is concerning because when you make a commitment to be on a board, it needs to be 110%. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, and then we have one more, did you say? Uh, Mr. Yassel. Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Good evening, board and staff. Um, uh, looking forward to seeing how uh, tonight's meeting goes. Um, I hope to see something um, materialize as far as appointment processes to uh, the replacement of uh, Trustee Tim Spadoni. And um, I'm looking forward to a healthy uh, debate on that topic. And other than that, I uh, hope you're all doing well. And I hope to speak with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. You Thank as well. you. Um, actually, we we do have um, that on our agenda for later in the meeting. Um, how to fill uh, Mr. Spadoni's vacancy? So we will be discussing that. Um, but um, unless there's any other requests no. for public comment, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is trustee report. Excuse me, um, Trustee Diamond. May I just say something about public comments? Mm -hmm. Um, during last month's public comments, a resident was personally attacked by pre-written statements from Trustee Spadoni and Director Lemke, yet they never addressed the specific points made in the public comments. Trustee Olson claimed the public comments to be derogatory, again, never disputing the actual points raised in the public comments. As a trustee of this board, I would ask that all trustees and administrators stick to the facts and issues and not personally attack our residents. Thank you. Okay, I don't remember any attack on a resident, but well, uh, I think we can agree that uh, residents should not be attacked. Neither um, should staff. Okay. Uh, and, no, and neither should staff, of course, obviously. I think um, you missed the point. The point is, we dislike what someone says and we personally attack them. The statements made against them were personal, but we never addressed the facts he brought up. That should be our job. Mm. But anyway, uh, that's my point. I think attack is an inappropriate word to use. Uh, no such thing as an attack. Nobody was doing that in that Verbally, or, oh, absolutely. He was, you degraded him. Not kind at all. I don't agree with that. Well, that's quite all right. I understand. And I wasn't at the meeting at the time, so whatever happened, I'm sorry it happened. I have no knowledge. All right, we will move on with uh, trustee reports, which is next on our agenda. Uh, the first report is from the president, unfortunately, our president, Tim Spadoni. Uh, he has had to resign because of moving out of the district. Uh, I just want to um, thank him uh, on the record here for his service and wish him well. Um, and we will, we will forge on uh, in his absence. Um, 
you know, as, as the vice president, I don't really have a report. Uh, so I will turn it over to, um, well, let's see. I, I think, well, first let's do our treasurer report. I think we usually do that uh, next and then I'll give the other trustees an opportunity to report also. Uh, Patty, um, did you wanna go through your treasurer report? Of course. Uh, September is the month we report this, uh, we, we go over the second month of the report of the fiscal year. We are 17% of the way through the, the budget. The library overall expenditures are at 14% of the budget. Revenues, which is on page seven. Uh, total revenues is at 28%, property tax, 28%, investment income, 47%. Salaries are at 18% of the budget. Uh, page eight, library materials is at 20% of the budget. Library operations expenditures at 15%. Page nine, general administration, 13% of the budget. Page 10, Employees for benefit, 17% of the budget. Uh, total utilities is at 19% of the budget. And capital expenditures is at zero. Flip to my next one. Page 11. Building and equipment is at 9% of the budget. Total expenditures, 14% of the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Patty, for going over that information. Um, do any of the other trustees have any reports on any uh, board-related activities or library-related activities during the past month? Uh, I myself am just uh, glad to uh, get in the library once in a while and uh, pick up a book. I've done that repeatedly. It uh, seems to work pretty smoothly. I'm getting used to dropping off books in the new location. I'll probably continue to drive over there even when the old one is reopened. Uh, so, um, you know, we're, we're adjusting. We're, we're looking forward to getting back to how things had been, but we're, we're adjusting to how things are now. And I want to thank the library staff for all their work in making the library as accessible to our residents as possible. So. Um, all right, I think what we'll do now is go to the payment of the bills. Uh, may have a motion to approve our operating expenses of $171,041.65, payroll expenses of $272,519.45, for a total expense of $443,561.10. Linda, did you make that motion? I did. Okay, is there a second? Second. Oh, wait a minute. I thought you... No, Patty's first. first. I made it first. Okay. I'm sorry. I know I sound so much alike. No, no, it's just the sound, it's, it doesn't, it's not the same as being there in person. But anyway, um, all right, any questions or comments regarding the payment of the bills? Then Susan, if you would please conduct a roll call. Karen? Yes. Uh, Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? No. Okay. All right, we are at that section of the agenda for the director's report. Susan, do you have a report to us? Uh, we do have a uh, part of our uh, packet, of course, in which you give us a detailed report with photos and everything. Uh, but would you like to explain or elaborate on any of that? Um, not a lot. I just, um, I did think that the Labor Day activity with uh, families being able, and just adults, we had some of the neighbors from Oakton Court come over and do big drawings on the retaining wall of the parking lot. And, um, and we got some good pictures of them. And it was just kind of a very, very low key, very, very inexpensive, a uh, fun way for people to 
come and make some art that's, you know, that's, a, you know, a, like a blank canvas of the retaining yeah. wall. I had sort of hoped that it would last longer, but of course it rained partway through. And so then the person that was doing the drawings, Marianne Roan and Children's, came back and drew some more, some more frames and things like that. And anyway, I just thought it ended up being a kind of light and joyful thing. So I really liked that. On another you know, note, I mean, uh, this some of these um, things that you've developed during the pandemic, we, we've done out of necessity because we couldn't yep. do other things. But I think some of them are good ideas that we should just continue to do in general. I mean, like yeah. I say, it was very low key. Yeah. What was it? The cost of chalk, maybe? Right, was, right. Uh, the well, it was even expense. leftover chalk, so. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I think that'd be nice for next year, too. Yeah, no, I think we've uh, we've learned a lot through this pandemic, and there are definitely things that we will be able to put to use in the future. So I like that. Then um, I did not put this in the director's report and probably won't, but um, this afternoon there was a uh, almost sort of a ceremony down in the teen underground for uh, Samer Yusuf, who had died back in the summer, and um, they the teen librarians at first they built this uh, tree out of um, out of construction paper and they cut out all these leaves and then they invited um, his friends and his family came and uh, a lot of the teachers and the principal of Culver all came over and so they had just a really nice uh, afternoon of remembering him and memorializing him and I just really appreciated that the teen librarians have really made Teen Underground such a place of connecting with that population who I think is having a, a tough time during the pandemic anyway. So to, you know, help them a little bit through their grief, I thought was very touching. And they, so I went down and looked at the, at some of the messages and they're just so sweet. And so they also have taken the window well that looks, that Teen Underground looks out into, and they have taken the money that was donated and they have painted pots down there and uh, planted plants. And they have, you know, you've probably seen the, the big words, we love you, Samer. On the on the side there, so it's very sweet, and I really appreciate it. I think it just really speaks to the connections that the library staff make with the community. We're, we really are uh, kind of, in some ways, the heart of the community, and it really comes through there. So that's kind of all I want. Well, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that we're doing, we're trying to help with the last minute census push. As much you know, they have sent us uh, face masks and t-shirts and hand sanitizer and all sorts of things as giveaways to try to promote uh, getting people to fill out the census because they only have a few more weeks here. So that's so all I have, just, but I'm happy to answer questions. All right. Um, I, I did want to ask you to just count, come up, comment briefly on the Illinois Public Lab Library Annual Report. Now, I think this took up a fair amount of your time completing these statistics. What, what generally is the ultimate purpose of collecting this information? Um, well, it goes to the state library. They're the ones that are collecting the information, and then it is uh, compiled into the uh, national statistics. And so it's just to give a picture of the use of libraries, um, you know, what they have and how they're used uh, for, for, from year to year. So uh, I think at this year's numbers for everybody are going to be kind of crazy, but... Um, but we all did our best. All right. Does anyone else have any questions about the report, Patty? It looks like you do. Yes, yeah. Patty. Uh, I was looking at the stuff you had in there about the, um, now I have to think what it's called. My brain just went, <laughs> the uh, passports. Oh. And I was wondering, when do you think, do you think we just have to wait until we're at the last stage, what is it, stage five, before we're able to go full swing on that again? Well, it, it's, I think, largely going to be up to the State Department. We can't do anything right now. We have not been given permission to do anything yet. Mm -hmm. um, Greg, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, um, you know, we do uh, uh, reach out to the State from time to time, or State Department from time to time, and uh, the answer is always the same, to just uh, hang on. They have their own schedule. Right now, they're just doing passports on an emergency basis. Um, uh, I get the impression that you can send uh, something in, send an application in, but it's just going to sit. They're not going to address it. Yeah. Um, so. I was trying to renew a passport, and you can go online, and it'll tell you how much, how many hundreds of thousands of passports are ahead of you waiting to right. be processed. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to wait. Have we received the camera that we were going to receive yet? 
Yeah, actually, uh, uh, we did have it in house, and we were uh, uh, we were testing it and trying to get uh, process down to take photographs, um, and then we uh, and then we closed the doors. So. Um, so when you know, we do open up, that'll be set. Well, it should be. Um, you know, I think that it'll take a little bit of time to uh, refresh everybody's uh, muscle memory, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, around that and um, you know but I you know they were making a lot of progress uh, in terms of taking sample photographs and sending them to the State Department to make sure that they were acceptable um, and that you know wouldn't cause a problem um, at their processing facilities and we were having some pretty good success with that. Cool. Thank you. Um, I have one uh, question also about, oh, I'm sorry, Diane, you go ahead, you're waiting. Oh, I, I just want to say thank you again, Susan, for a very comprehensive report. Thank you. And, and I, I love the way everybody just contributes their thoughts, their ideas, their accomplishments. And especially this time, Mary Kay outdid herself. <laughs> <laughs> Went on and on and on. And just it, it tells us all the behind the scenes work that people are not aware of. So I thought it was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the trustee calendar. Uh, you have October 16th, night, Niles Night of the Roses at the Chateau Ritz, rescheduled from April. Is that going to be rescheduled again, or are they going to do it uh, virtual. remote? It's, it's going to be, be virtual. virtual. OK. Yep. I'll get that information to you as soon as I get it. OK, just wondering. Yeah. Um, I was wondering the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Linda, I'm sorry, Linda, yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted, uh, Susan, if you could just go over for the patrons on the new realm study results, just because now that we have to wait um, the, what is it, seven, day, seven Additional days? Additional Seven days now, yeah. right? Because it's stacked, because ours are in a bundle. Um, I just want them to be reassured that, at, you know, like each of the stacks are taken away, then you wait the seven days, and then uh, is it then a new fresh bin is put there, and then that one waits seven days? Like, are the bins changed out every day, or how does Well, yeah, the, the bin that is, you know, the slot feeds into a small bin, and that fills up multiple times a day. So there is somebody in the quarantine room um, taking things out of the bins, and then we rented some large trucks, some large carts, and so they're 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 big. Now they're starting to pack them a little bit more loosely because they did determine that the virus stays alive longer when things are crammed together. So and so we went from three days uh, all the way back up to seven days, and you know, and right now I think we must have uh, close to thirty carts full of material that then you know, day by day has to get run through the sorter and, uh, and checked back in. And, you know, the only real problem with it from a patron service point of view is that it's just taking a long time for things to get off of people's records. And, you know, people that worry about things, that's a thing to worry about. We actually had somebody today who was very concerned about it. And so the uh, staff member actually took a picture of her, you know, took a picture of the, her name and her books to, to prove that she had brought them back. So, you know, we're trying to help people feel comfortable with it. But, you know, back in the, in the olden days, you didn't have this automatic check-in anyway. So, but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a nuisance. Since we don't have fines anymore, they're still worried about that? They, well, some are, yeah. I mean, some of them are perfectly, they don't care. It doesn't matter I mean, to them. But. I got a phone call. I just figured, well, it's sitting in uh, quarantine. That's right. That is right. Well, I just, I just thank you. I just want to reassure everyone that we're yep. being doing our due diligence and keeping up with the studies and, you know, working on the processes accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Pecos Services is working the, very hard on it. Any other questions about the director's report? I have a few. Yes, Carolyn. Okay, um, on the first page, Susan, where you mentioned the UV wands, um, I think it was an experiment. Um, and I think the experiment completed. As I read through this, I thought I saw more information. So is our sanitizing process 
not working well enough? You thought maybe you needed UV ones? Is, is that why we're um, looking into them? Um, the Safety and OSHA Compliance Committee, the social committee, uh, continues uh -huh. to meet and they keep trying to come up with better and more efficient ways of doing things. And so, you know, early on, all anybody knew to do was wipe things down. Now they're trying to come up with things that are maybe a little bit less hard on surfaces yeah. and things like that. So they're experimenting sure, with the sure. UV wands. Um, the uh, maintenance people currently are spraying down the bathrooms multiple times a day. And so this would be um, a way of trying to sanitize them without all of that, you know, without it having to dry between times. And so oh, it's, it's just, see. they're kind of seeing how it works um, and trying to, uh, you know, cut the cost of all the wipes and things that, that we go through on a day, like wiping down keyboards and things like that. So... Yeah, Mr. Oh, Bay was experimenting with that. Okay, I thought this was for library materials. I didn't realize it's for all the other sanitizing and cleaning that you have to do. Okay. Yeah, I mean. we're going to experiment with it on the materials, but I think the issue with the materials is that the virus can be on the insides of the books, and I can't imagine that it's going to oh, be God. caught time effective to be going through page by page. But, <laughs> but, yeah. right. no, but we exactly. have the wand, so we're going to give it a try. Well... It okay, all right. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's understandable for the keyboards because, you know, wiping them down, the amount of moisture that has to be used all the time. Yeah. And then um, I had a question. Last month I had asked for a documented explanation of the library's da daily statistics, and you were going to compile that um, like you did in the past. But I didn't see it in your report. Is that something you're still working on? Yeah, well, it's not going to be daily statistics. I think the board agreed that that would be kind of overkill. Uh, for this month, I was focusing on finishing the Ippler report and then giving you the highlights of that. And then for next month, we will, you know, the staff is still kind of tweaking how they are thinking of, you know, we have, a, we have a variety of different kinds of programs and we have to kind of figure out how do you count this kind of program versus that kind of program. So Cindy has been working diligently uh, with all the programmers on trying to figure out some of that stuff. They're just things that we have to be kind of getting straight at the beginning of this year so that we carry things th through consistently throughout the year. So we're still working on that a little, but I will have that some statistics for you next month. I just thought you would like to see the Ippler statistics. So that's what I focused on. No, actually, time. yeah, no, I, I'm really concerned about statistics since um, we, we reopened. But my I had another question about statistics. Um, I think you mentioned um, in this report Oh, that there was difficulty accounting for attendance. I think it's certain online programs. So I had a question about this. If, if I register for something online or I join in, there's no way for you to determine how many people are actually utilizing that program at that time? No, there is, but it's, um, there's the difference between whether you're counting the people that are watching right at the moment, or then you're counting the clicks on it, and the different platforms right. all count a little bit differently. So, yeah, we are getting, getting some statistics. I don't, you know, I would be very clear on our second Sunday special statistics, you know, of how many kids were in the room for a reptile show in the past because I could count each one of them. This one, I, you know, because the platforms count things a little bit differently, you know, it's based right. on how many seconds they were watching and things like that. Right. I, I don't feel as confident and I just wanted the board to be aware that, you know, the time we're living in right now is things are not as clear cut as they used to be. So we're doing our best Surely. trying very hard to be consistent with ourselves at least and with what the other libraries are doing. But these online programs or databases, whatever they're called, they already have some type of mechanism to... to well, a database is very different. A, da your, a database is, is something completely different. Yeah, so I'm talking I'm about... As as... Go ahead. I'm talking about a performer who might have 25 people watching live and then another 50 people come and watch the video later. That would be the kind of yeah. program statistics. Database statistics all are pulled from the individual databases. So we're right. okay. Today. So back to the pro 
So back to the program. So there is a way to account for who's watching it live, who comes in later. So at some point, you can account for the um, the attendance on these programs. Yeah, that's the, that's the number we're keeping. I just am warning you that I don't feel 100% confident of them. Okay. But I guess so then my, 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 my question is, We've been slowly reopening and hopefully we're, you know, we're always trying to add something new and see if we can get more people to participate. Do we have records to discuss with the board you know, since we're going into um, considering a levy? We don't even know where we stand with um, this COVID-19 situation. So will you be able to produce that information for us? What, what information are you requesting? I'm not really sure. Attendance, programming, oh, attendance during the programming. different reopening stages. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, the board had not asked me to do that previously, but, um, you know, we definitely have statistics for every month, and I can give the board what I have and try to present it as clearly as possible. I certainly can give you information where you can see, but the problem with the time that we're in right now is we don't know what's to come. We don't know how long it's going to take for things to change. And then we don't know how busy we're going to be once life gets a little bit more normal. So it's going to be very hard to predict. Well, I think we don't want to predict. I think we want to have a clear idea of what has transpired since March. Like you can, we could you get can a get. handle on that much. Yep. We don't that really know. Get. Okay. Um, and then, um, I think there was another comment about, uh, oh no, we addressed it. Oh, I want to thank, um, I think it's Kit, not, uh, Black, what's her first name? Karen Black or Cecilia? No, no. Oh. I'll get to that later. Okay, let's go to COVID. Uh, there's a case of COVID in the library, but apparently that staff person is um, doing well. So I just want to wish them well. That's kind of scary, but I'm glad to hear they're okay. I, I was kind of worried about that, even though you were doing such a great job of having them not come in so regularly. But it's good that whoever it is is doing well. And then I had a question about trustee election. Um, the candidate packets will soon be available. Do you have a date for availability? Yes, Monday. Yeah, the first day that it is legal to gather signatures is Tuesday. So we're going to have the packets ready on Monday. Diane and I are actually working on that tomorrow. Okay, what day, do you know what the date is from Monday? I'm sorry. 20, Monday is the 21st. Okay, are they, thank you. Are leaving them at the front desk then? Um, uh, yeah, probably at the info desk. Okay. Yep. Okay, and then, and then I had, oh, sorry. And then I had a question. It's on page 26. It's about overdrive. Um, and I'm, I'm reading through this, and there's a mention of overdrive collections being available to schools through Via Sora, and I think the school is East Main District. Can you explain what that means? Sure. Uh, overdrive has developed a school collection that they are offering to the schools. Um, and uh, so it's up to the school if they want to join or not. East Main District 63 has, has joined and we can connect our collection to their collection so that our uh, card holders can check things out from our collection as well as from the school's collection. I see. Okay. So it's, but the school's responsibility is to join the SORA or purchase yeah. it or whatever. The, okay. And, so, and we just connect our, our, our software or whatever it's called. Okay. All right. And then I had another question. Um, I think it disappeared on another page. Sorry. One second here. Okay. Oh, yes. Community engagement overdrive collection. Um, I think it's the same, East Main School District 63. Oh, purchase of digital collection. Okay, so that was the explanation of yeah, that's the what same I thing, yeah. understand. Okay, I get it. All right. There's two different and, departments um, commented on it. Okay, I got it. And then, oh, yeah, my thank you is to Donna Block uh -huh. for um, 
having that memorial for Yusuf, I thought that was extraordinary. That was that was wonderful on, on her part, and I wanted to thank her. Well, thank okay, you. Yeah, so it was Donna. Well, it's actually Donna and uh, Donna, Donna and Rachel, and the teens themselves. Well, thank. Well, thank you also to Rachel. Then thank that's you. all I had. Thank you so much. Oh wait, wait. Before I do this for the hundred and tenth time, does your director's report end at page thirty? Seven and anything after that is on its own. Like if I have a question. Uh, well, my director's report always ends with the trustee calendar, so that this time is page okay. thirty-nine, and the other things okay, are good. communications. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for your time. Sure. All right. Unless uh, anyone else had a question about the director's report, we will move on to communications, and the communications do begin after the trustees after the director's report. Uh, we have a uh, couple of patron suggestions and a, a lot of very nice comments about our staff members. And um, I just want to uh, make sure the staff knows that we see these comments uh, about them and that we very much appreciate their being as helpful as they are to our residents. Mm -hmm. So uh, please pass on our thanks to the staff. I will. Well, there were questions about the communications. I had one question if no one else has raised their hand. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone else is raising their hand. Okay, thank you. Um, it is page 40, it's CCS, and um, it's a, again, it's a check, um, I guess it's a grant from Rails. And Susan, what I was wondering, is this the second check we've gotten from them? Um, they know I got to check it. It's this maybe second or third. I think they did this last year as well. Um, I think this is the second year of it. So we get more than one check from them, apparently. That's what this means. I, I was a little, I wasn't sure because I remember asking you about the check. Uh, the, the information I saw about a check a few months ago, right. and then I saw this, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe is it the same check, and she's just giving me a copy, but no, this no, is another check, right? It is, yeah, well, it's, it's our good. quarterly portion, it says. Oh. Okay, and, and then I had a question. I noticed in your director's report, sometimes there are checks, um, like uh, donations, or there's checks we receive for some purpose, and, and now this check is separately. Um, I guess, is there a distinction, like why some would be in the director's report? I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how, how you separate these or what it means. Um, well, I think anytime there's a check, I'm putting that in the director's report, along with whatever communication I got about it. I mean, I might. But it doesn't. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose I might mention in passing that we got a small donation and where it wasn't a check and I didn't want to put it in. I, and also I'm trying to be careful with not revealing people's banking information by showing checks in the Oh, no, no, I get, it. I get it. I just thought there was a reason for some being in the director's report and then some mentioned separately. I was trying to figure out what that was, what it meant. Yeah. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. That's fine. Um, but I did have another question. Um, it came to my attention that we received um, two TIF payments uh, totaling $194,768. One in what January kind of payments? and one in June. And I didn't see them in either the director's report of those months or singly. So did we, did we not get notification of those? Um, it, well, it's spread across two fiscal years, and it, it's a complicated process because it's not. This is not something where we get a check that I would be showing you. In it's just money that appears in our account, and then Greg usually has to kind of figure out where it came from and what it is <laughs> exactly. And um, okay. there's a little bit of back and forth with the village on one of them, and trying to get it sorted out. And yeah, so it's not nearly as clear cut as some of these other things. So. Yeah, I, I probably should have mentioned it in the director's report. So yeah, that's a good call. I should have, have brought it up, but. Well, what I, what I noticed is the second payment or the last payment was June 10th, which was actually our budget meeting day. But if you're saying it's electronically, and I can right. understand the confusion when you look at your account. Okay, but I was not aware that we received this 
And it's a pretty large amount, especially since we were discussing our budget along with this coronavirus. And to have received 194000 that that's, that's substantial. Um, I would definitely suggest that it be brought to the trustees' attention in the future. Yeah, I, I think that's fair enough. I'm sure it was included in the revenue, but, you know. But we uh, would have no way of knowing what it meant because, you know, we always have issues with those numbers. I'm saying if we're going to receive such a substantial amount of money, this too should be brought to our attention because this could have made some difference in our budgeting decisions. But thank you so much. I appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Are there any other questions about the uh, communications? All right. Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, and this would be new business. And the first part of new business is election of temporary officers and any other additional officer positions that might be needed. So as I understand our bylaws, we need to, since our president left, uh, elect uh, what I'll call a temporary president. And that president will serve until we have seven members on the board again, which could be fairly soon, uh, but <laughs> for the next meeting or two, we would need a new president. And um, so that's what we have to do tonight. We have to uh, choose a, what we would call a temporary president. Uh, so, Linda? Um, I would, may I make a motion? Uh, yes, you can make a motion. I would like to make a motion to nominate Karen Diamond for president in the interim. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Is there a Next. second? Second. Okay. Oops. All right. Second. Okay. Are there any other um, nominations? All right. Uh, hearing none, I guess I ask <laughs> for a vote. Um, I don't know if we need a roll call for this or Susan. It's probably cleanest. Okay. Would you do a roll call? <laughs> Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Karen? Uh, I guess yes. Okay. <laughs> this is again, this is again this temporary pass. position. Temporary position. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Karen. So, but um, I uh, can't serve both as president and vice president, and that means the vice president spot is open. Uh, so I nominate Linda Ryan to serve as vice president. Again, this would be a temporary spot until we get our seven members. Um, is there a, a second to my nomination? Okay. All right. And Susan, would you call the roll? Yes. Karen? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Linda. Okay. All right. Um, now, Patty and Diane um, will continue on uh, as our treasurer and secretary. No changes are needed there. Uh, so we will move forward now to our next item on the agenda, which is discussing the procedure for appointing uh, someone to fill the trustee vacancy. So uh, Tim Spadoni uh, did give us our resigna a resignation, so we do know we need to fill his spot. Uh, we, I have not received any other resignations, so we, we know, but we know we have one spot to fill. Um, and what we've done in the past is we've put an advertisement in the newspaper. Susan, am I correct? Uh, uh, or on the website? We, I think sure we've done a press release for the, for the newspaper, release. and then we have posted it on our website and posted it in the building, though I don't know how much traffic that would get. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you could post it on the front someplace. Yep. Where right. And then these it. days, social media, of course, is a place where we uh, All right. get a lot of people seeing. All right. So I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to give everyone else a chance to comment on this, that we've done what we've done in the past, and that is uh, solicit applicants to be, uh, to fill out the vacancy uh, created by Tim Spadoni. And, um, I think that vacancy would be from now through April. Correct. I believe that's correct. Is that right, Susan? Yes. 
it, so it would it would be you know roughly a, a six month term that this appointed person would fill out that term. So um, people can I think you have a form for that for people to fill out. Am I right, uh, Susan? Do you have a, a um, form, or have you just asked people to submit letters? I think we ask people to submit letters. Yeah, I think that is how it worked in the past, and ask okay. a couple of pieces of information. But I okay. can base it on what we have sent out in the past, unless right. there's something new people want. And then I think uh, what we've done in the past is at the next board meeting, we would interview any applicants that we might get. And then by the e end of the evening, select a person, contact the person, tell them they've been selected, and then they would sit at the next board meeting. Is that, uh, I'm going to ask other people, if, is that how you recall what we've done in the past? And is that what you would like to do again? Or do you have some other ideas for proceeding? No, did, wanna, the, my, only question, my, sorry, my only question is, we give them a deadline of what? Was it a week prior to the meeting so that we can see the applications or the letters they send ahead of time? Yeah, Patty, that's a good question. I think we do, or we did in the past. We have give people a deadline, and it, it only has to be like a week before the meeting, yeah. just so um, Susan so can get can the letters to us. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be very long, um, but it, I, at most a week before the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any other recollections or suggestions for doing anything differently this time? Can I just make a few comments? Uh, you no know, one uh, just one second, Carolyn. I, I know you can't see her, but Diane had her hand up. That's so I'm going to recognize That's her, fine. and then I'm going to turn to you. Yes, Diane. Uh, I think that what we did last time worked out very well, and we got good candidates, and we were um, really surprised that it did work out as well as that so I, I would say I don't see any changes yet mm -hmm. that I would like to do. I don't know what would be different that would help us. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. Um, all right, Carolyn, you uh, wanted to state something about that? Yes. Just um, one question first. Um, Susan, did you say they fill out a form? Is that the procedure? I kind of missed that. No, I think that, that we just put in the ad that they need to write a letter, and I think there were a couple of particular points okay. we asked them to address in the letter. Okay, that's what I thought. A letter of interest. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes sense. And then um, I had a question. Um, I, I don't think we need a week's notice. We, we need to have them send them in a week before. I think a few days would be good. Um, I would like to strongly recommend that we try to get more than two applicants um, to um, show an interest. If not, then we're gonna have to seek out more people. Um, as, as you can see, um, Chelsea Wilsey hasn't been here for quite some time. And uh, things just seem to come up. We were really quick in making that decision. But um, I don't think two candidates is enough. We should expect it, at least five or six. We should, you know, spend some time um, evaluating or interviewing these people. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, is your plan to interview next month? Yes. So we have a levy meeting in October that we're going to have discussing the levy and we're going to interview candidates. Um, I'm sorry, Patty, you wanted to say something? Two points. First, mm -hmm. I agree with Carolyn that yes, it's nice to have more than two, but realistically, we're asking for only six months. So we might not get the interest. Yeah. So we get deal with what we deal with. Secondly, I was thinking the same thing as about the levy month. Mm -hmm. uh, unless we put a second meeting in there, I don't know, how are we gonna handle that? Well, um, you know, we could uh, schedule a separate meeting, um, I suppose. Um, Just to interview them? What? 
I said a second meeting just to interview him, say the week after our general meeting? Um, I, I suppose it's possible. What does everyone else think? I, well, I think it's doable. Do, I mean, we don't have a limit on people who want to um, apply, do we? No. No, but yeah. we have difficulty. Yeah, it'd be great people. to have more people, but it's apparently very difficult. We I mean, will. you know, it's a volunteer job. Uh, you know, we like to get a lot of applicants, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think there are time. many people but interested. Great. All right, well, let's, let's focus on the topic of uh, a separate meeting. Um, oh. Patty, uh, I, I think I hear you saying you think we should have a separate meeting, an additional meeting? Because depending on how many applicants we, we have, like I'm thinking back to when that one time we had like five applicants. It took a while to talk to them all. You're right. And it did. It doesn't really always, but sometimes it does. When we have a budget, or not a budget, excuse me, a levy meeting, that takes a little longer in itself. And then you're putting on the interviews on top of it. Uh, you know, I don't know if, how long it'll take. Okay. Um, Diane, Linda, do you uh, have an opinion about that? D Linda. Um, I'm fine with having a separate meeting if anyone else does. Okay. Diane, do you have an opinion um, about that? Yeah, I don't mind having a second meeting. It, okay. it, yeah, it would be fine. All right. Um, now the question is when to hold it. Um, may, I, may I suggest a date? Because I, uh, have, I have some concerns. <laughs> My schedule is a little complicated. And I just have one other quick question. So if it's before the next meeting, then would they just, they would sit on the levy meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know that, that might be sort of a lot to throw at a person within, you know, like if we, if we appointed them a few days before we have the levy meeting, that's really a lot to throw at a brand new person. Yeah, uh, sure. Maybe, maybe it would make sense to have uh, the interview meeting after the next, after the levy meeting, I don't know. Susan, you were going to give us some dates. Uh, well, it was before, though. I was going to suggest the 14th. Um, the Tuesday, uh, that's the Tuesday before? Wednesday, or? yeah. Wednesday, October 14th. Yeah. Uh, the board meeting that month is the 21st. Ah. So it's a whole week before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, the thing that would be in favor of putting, of having the new trustee get started is that, y if you recall, in the October meeting, you... Uh, you make a determination of the levy, you decide, you, you give us instructions for what you want us to do, but you're not voting on it. You come to a consensus and then you give us instructions to prepare an ordinance, which mm -hmm. you do, and then it's actually voted on at the November meeting. So I actually mm -hmm. think it would be unfair to ask somebody to vote on the, at the November meeting without having had the presentation and the Information yeah, from yeah. the from the October meeting where you're making Good the point. Mm -hmm. but that's my feeling. I don't. Can I? Can I make a comment when you have a minute, uh, Carolyn? Yes. Um, regarding the scheduling of the interviews, um, I would recommend that we have them after the levy meeting. And what we need to understand is the levy meeting in October is a lot more complicated and a lot more detailed than just voting yes or no. That's where discussions and comments and opinions come up. So that is something that a new trustee wouldn't be familiar with. And like Trustee Wilsey did when she came on board, we had a vote and she, did, she recused herself from voting because she had not participated. So a new trustee could do that as well. But I think in terms of which meeting regarding the levy is a lot more detailed, it certainly is the October meeting, not the November meeting when we simply vote yes or no. And I would, um, I'm trying to gauge the timeline here. It's September 16th. Um, some advertisement would go in the paper and online or in the, on our website this week. And 
it would be up for a month and then we would interview. I mean, does that sound doable? I mean, I, since I'm, I'm interested in getting more applicants, I know I'm hearing a lot of people are interested in being on the library board. So I want to make sure that it's out there for them to see. But that's my, my take on which meeting is, is better for a new trustee to come in. Um, I don't know. Um, Both she and Susan have valid points. Yeah. So I, I, I could go either way. I just myself, I am planning on being out of town the week of uh, October 12th. Now, I might, I mean, if we're still meeting by Zoom, I might be able to Zoom in anyway, even though I am not necessarily in Niles. Um, is our meeting the 12th? Is that what no, you're saying? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just, oh. I'm, maybe, I don't know. I may be not around. Uh, but that may not matter, actually. Uh, well, any other consider, thoughts? I'm sorry. You could consider the following Monday, the 19th, but I, I think one of you had said before that you don't like having a Monday meeting and a Wednesday meeting in the same week. So, doesn't face me. It's it's okay. It is what it is. Yeah. Well, if we're gonna, you mean you're gonna have a Monday interview meeting and a Wednesday levy meeting? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that to me that's just, I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot to prepare for. But uh -huh. I'm only one vote, so whatever you want. If we don't do it that Monday, when else do you suggest? Susan? Uh, well, maybe the following week. Okay. The week of the 26th. So that would put it after the board meeting. Okay. Which is fine with me also. So that would be October 26th, you're saying, would be the Wednesday? Uh, 28th would be the Wednesday, if you wanted to keep to Wednesdays. Well, does anybody want it a different day than Wednesday? Um, yeah, Linda? Are you, are you saying for the regular board meeting it's the 28th? I'm no, getting... the regular one is the 21st. This would be for a special board meeting to interview and appoint a new trustee. Okay, I, I just want to say I think it's important that we get someone on the board as soon as possible because it's such a short term. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. But I think to say someone come in just for four months or, five, you know, I just think it's important to have someone, especially if maybe then they're thinking of planning and running in the future, it just gives them more of a flavor. Maybe even people are listening right now are thinking, oh, maybe I want to do it, who have been listening for months. So they really do know what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. So, so am I hearing from you, you would like to choose someone before the October board meeting, is that? I, I would, I think just, okay. and, and if they decide that they, you know, don't feel comfortable voting on the topic, then, you know, then they pass. Okay. But it's important to, you know, get someone on the board as soon as possible and um, make them feel comfortable and welcome. And um, I think for the community, it's it's important that we, we fill the position, but of course, um, give enough time and due diligence too. It's hard. It's you know, it's, it's a catch twenty two we're in right now. Mm -hmm. you know, so. And I think it's only fair to give them a month or cl yeah. as close to a month as possible for their letters. Yeah. Um, <sighs> okay. All right. Today is the seventeenth. Um, how how do you feel about uh, the fifteenth of October? Um, it's a Thursday. Is that a bad day? Fine for me. Fine. Fine for me. Carolyn? That's, that, that's fine. Is that a, you mean an interview day? Yes. yes. That would okay. be, yeah, today is the 16th and that is the 15th. Wow. So, so you're not even giving them four weeks to submit. Okay. You know, I well, hope. I mean, if you were, are. we can do it. But Carolyn, we could do it on the nineteenth. But I said, I thought you said you didn't want to do it the nineteenth. Wait, what did you say? I, October what? The fifteenth? Yes. That's what I just said. Three. Would be the meeting before. 
the week before our annual me our actual meeting. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. And it is four weeks if we put it How out. How about Thursday after our board meeting? Well, I think nope. we just decided that we hope to get this person on uh, on the 21st um, because it is such a short term. Uh, now that person may decide they want to recuse themselves. They don't want to make a, they don't want to really participate, but I think getting someone on the board sooner rather than later is sort of what we'd like to do because the period of time they're going to be on the board is so short to begin with. Can I, so, can I just comment? Yeah. I, I don't think the length of the, the, of filling this position is the issue. Um, someone who's interested in being on the board will probably want to run in the upcoming election. I don't see the urgency in rushing to pick a trustee when we just did that last time. And again, if, there, if it is so urgent that the trustees be on the board, where is trustee Wilsey? So, you know, we got, we got to look at this from both sides here. I'm concerned about having enough time for enough people to submit, re to submit a letter of interest. Um, if you want to schedule it for the 15th, but I, I, I'll be really disappointed if it's going to be two people that everyone's already had in mind all along, because that's really not getting um, the interest out into the community. So whatever date you want to go with, that's fine. I'm just hoping that we can generate more than two candidates. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, my thing of what I understand what you're saying, however, you said you've had quite a bit of interest in this position, then therefore I would assume those people would be prepared to get it in within a couple of weeks and be there for the meeting. They need to, they need to have time to know about it. Okay, I don't know how people get information regarding the library. Some people seem to get it quickly, some people can't find anything. So, um, well, we'll just, we'll just go with whatever you decide. That's fine. I'm just, my only concern is I'd like to see a larger pool this time than last time. So, well, thank you. It, realistically, just for, because it's such a short term, I just can't see that there's going to be a large pool. Uh, but that's my point of view. I mean, that's obviously opinion. But you know what? I think the people who are looking at the, the library board aren't concerned about the length of the position, they're all concerned about the board in general. So I think that's a different outlook. Again, that's, that's opinion too. Oh no, it's fact. I'm hearing it all okay. over the place. Okay. Well then I'm assuming if they're interested, they're paying attention to the meetings and paying attention to when it's going to be posted. So you know, if you say they're already interested, then they have to be looking for the information. We have to be notified. So let's do a good job of that and it'll all be fine. All right. So, uh, I mean, we could move to the 19th if we want to do that. That gives them a few more days. You want to meet on the 19th, What's Carolyn? The, is the 19th two days before the board meeting? Right? Yeah. No, because I have to okay. with the board meeting. I mean, okay, fine. All right. then, you want. Go with the 15th. then we'll have to go with the 15th, I think. Okay, that's All right. fine. All right, uh, is that going to be 7 p.m., I think? Yes. Okay, what day did we finally say? Uh, Thursday, October 15th. Okay. Thursday, October 15th. 15th, you said, right? 15th, five. One one five. five. At 7? Uh, yes, yeah, 7 o'clock. Okay, great. Okay, we've got that set, and uh, Susan, I think uh, you know what uh, what you, we want you to do in terms of soliciting new applicants, uh, what you've done in the past, and any other notices that you want to put on the exterior doors would be good. Uh, I know your staff uh, uh, knows how to post things on social media, so I trust it'll go up there too, correct? I'm sure it will. Can I, is this is going to be a Zoom meeting, right? It is going to be a Zoom meeting, but I was just going to mention that I think it will probably not be a Zoom webinar because a webinar cannot have a waiting room. And I think you have to have a waiting room because you bring people in one at a time. 
Okay. So, I think it will have to be a regular Zoom meeting and I'll have to just, uh, you know, double check on how to make that extra secure. Thank okay. you. Because you don't want to get to that. And, and thank you for remembering to, uh, to address that issue too. Sure. Okay, good. Can I ask right. one question before you yeah. move on? So Susan, we have the interview date, then what's the process? Will, will you be collecting these letters of interest and giving them to us by a certain day? Is that how that'll be? I think that's how it's worked in the past. Um, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I, can't, I just want to be clear. So, and then, so you'll let us know, like maybe a couple of days before the interview, we should be getting them. Is that kind of what we could assume? Well, you had talked about uh, wanting some time to review them. Somebody had said a week in advance. That doesn't give people a week to write their letter. It does a week. No. Even if it's That's two or three days, it, it's more than enough. Two days is probably more than enough. I, all right. my, all right, I don't so know. I, how about if I send them to you all? Uh, we make the deadline of um, Columbus Day, the 12th, and I get the information to you by the 13th. All right. so, but to me. Um, I, Okay, because I'm sorry, the date we're meeting is the 15th. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on. Or, okay, we're good? We're good. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to approve closing the library on Tuesday, November 3rd, except for use as a polling place. So, Susan, uh, is it typical our library was uh, used as a polling place in the past? Yeah, our library has always been a polling place. All right, um, and so your suggestion is that the library would confine itself to being just a polling place that day. Is that correct? Yes. The only reason is because, you know, we have this very uh, unusual schedule going on right now where we open on the hour, we close on the 45, we're closed for two hours in the middle of the day. And there are, are if you've been in the library, you know, there are announcements about every 10 minutes. So I think that would be very confusing for the poll workers, for the voters, trying to discern, you know, who's, who should be coming in and who shouldn't. And I, so then I thought about, well, just throwing all those rules out for that one day, but I think that's also very confusing. So, um, and I'm not sure great work would get done that day either. So uh, I, to me, it seems simplest to, uh, to minimize the number of people in the building at the same time, because you don't want to have a lot of people in the building at the same time, um, and just close the building to the public, except as a polling place. All right. So, but now I understand you're gonna you're planning on doing something else in conjunction with that, and that staff will not get a floating holiday instead. Is that is that it? What I was gonna do is I was gonna sort of steal their Veterans Day holiday and turn that into Election Day, so they would get paid uh, for not working that day as they would as they would with the floating holiday. It just has them out of the building. Um, I think it's I think it's the cleanest way to do it. And then are you going to be open on Veterans Day? Yeah, we're always, that was always a floating holiday, so we were always floating. open on it. But yeah, people okay. had to find a day to take. This way, everybody will take the same day, and I, I think it will work out the best. All right. Does yeah. anyone have a question uh, regarding this? All right, well, I guess we need a motion to uh, uh, have the Niles Main District Library uh, close the library building on Tuesday, November 3rd, except for the purpose of hosting a polling site. Pat, Patty has made a motion. Do I have a second? Uh, Linda's made a second. Uh, would you call the roll, Susan? Erin? Yes. Uh, Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right, great. Now we have one more item here under new business, uh, recommendation uh, to extend the expiration date of unserved cards. Susan, would you explain what, what is this about? Uh, well, if you recall back in May, you um, took our suggestion to offer the kids that are up in, the, in Washington School mainly, of District 63, the opportunity to have a library card during, you know, for a few months during the pandemic, the state library had been recommending it. And so, uh, but you may wanted a deadline on it. The deadline that you made was September 30th. Uh, what I, the children's librarians though have been coming to me and they're saying, uh, the school did a very big push on everybody getting a library card at the beginning of the school year. So we suddenly now have gotten 
the applications that we were anticipating getting back in the spring. So uh, I checked into this. We have about 45 cards that have been issued. So I am hoping that you would allow us to uh, extend the date until March 31st and that uh, a corrected agenda should say March 31st, 2021, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Patty, did you have a question? Uh, no, because realistically, well, who knows if we'll still be the way we are with this uh, COVID. There, right. I think we picked September 30th originally because we thought everything would be over by then. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. So um, anyone else have any questions or comments about this uh, matter? And, uh, could I have a motion to uh, extend the extension? I have a comment. I have a yes, comment. Carolyn. Okay, Carolyn, I, yes. I, believe when, I believe when we voted on this, initially the purpose was for that students would have something to do in the summer because COVID-19 had just hit and um, everything was closed and there was nowhere for students to go. Um, and now that we want to extend it, um, well, after we, we, we approved this, I will admit, I thought about it, and I realized that school districts are receiving federal money because of the dilemma from COVID-19 and how many students are unable to obtain whatever it is they need for their education. I also know that the state provides funding to schools, especially for students, who are of low income and whose parents um, fall within certain uh, financial parameters. So at this time, I'm thinking we may want to see the school take on this expense since we've already um, agreed to um, allow this opportunity during the summer to help them through the COVID-19, at least initial stages. But I think when you look at all the funding that's available for this particular pandemic and state funds, I think the school's in a much better financial position to help their students rather than expecting us to take on, you know, increasing this and in, in taking on an additional um, expense. Well, um, I, let me ask Susan, does this really cost us anything? Um, I mean, it's not like we're out of pocket anything. Right. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, it mostly just, um, for example, there is a children's database called Tumble Books where kids can li uh, have a picture book read to them and it can be in different languages and it can go faster or slower. And so it's a good re learning to read tool. And so that would be the kind of example of something that they might be using with the library card. There are a number of different databases though that, um, that might be useful to them. Their concern was just that all of these kids had just gotten library cards and then to go, okay, here you go, here you go. Oh, now it doesn't work. It, after just that amount of time would just be kind of mean and they didn't feel good about that. So yeah, I wanted to bring it to the board. Um, yeah. But it, you're right, it does not actually cost us anything. Okay. Can I just make another uh, comment, please? Yeah. Yes. I believe what this is viewed as is um, they don't have to pay for a library card living outside of the district. Is that what this means? Yeah. So, these are these yeah, are the, family just, yes. yeah, the pockets of uh, unincorporated main township that don't pay library taxes to anybody. They, and probably many of them didn't even know that when okay. they moved into the house that they but are. Isn't, but isn't that fee 200 and some dollars per family? That, that is what our charge would be. So at the end of this, we okay, would be so, telling people that's what they would have to pay to get the card renewed. So, but what I'm trying to say is we say there's no fee associated with this, but there truly is because our staff works very hard to accommodate accommodate every card user. And in addition, students use the costly downloadables and that and you know, maybe databases, but what they use is very expensive and, and, and there is a cost associated with it. I guess what I'm trying to say is it is not my intention for these students not to receive this. It's my suggestion that the library approach the superintendent or principal and have a conversation, you know, expressing the possibility for them to pick this up. Because believe it or not, this is 
not costly for them. And to try to reciprocate the library in some way for what we've done, I, I, I think we should at least approach them. Um, well, you know, I, I don't know if it's not costly for them. I, I don't know that they would necessarily get reimbursed for what they might spend the schools. And I don't oh, know if the schools will choose to do this or feel that this is something they can do. That is by cards for families. Um, I, I just feel at this time, it seems sort of mean spirited to take library cards away from kids, uh, especially when they, they just got them. And, um, you know, when things are back to normal, yeah, we should be going back to charging uh, the unincorporated area. But I sort of hate to send bills out to people at this time for their library card. No, 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 no. I didn't well, yeah, no, you know, we, we would have to no, do that if we decide, if we're not going to, if we're not going to, to agree to extend this. Now, uh, our administration needs to approach the school principal and have dialogue about this and see what can come of it. That's what I'm saying. I am not saying put this on the families. I'm saying the school, the Board of Education has a lot more money and a lot more access to provide services for students, especially since they're federally funded for COVID-19. And I'm sure there are state grants as well. We should at least investigate it. We should so, have a conversation so our, with them. Our uh, library district, uh, does that cover different school districts, uh, different unincorporated area school districts? I think I it's all in the one. I 63. Think that, yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that unserved area is all in there. Yeah. I mean, it just and just to be clear, I always like to be sure people understand that the great majority of unincorporated Maine Township is paying taxes to us. It is this pocket of unserved. Um, I also would like to mention that I literally just today got notified by Tony Preckwinkle that she is allocating five thousand dollars in federal money uh, from the CARES Act to each library district, which we will have to apply for, but then we will be receiving five thousand dollars. That will need to be applied to things that directly protect us from COVID-19. And of course, we have already made a lot of expenditures like that. So it could help pay for some of those things. But in terms of money, we're getting a little bit of federal money too. Would that automatically then go towards this, what we would have gotten towards these kids? Well, it's all one bucket of money. So it's just mm -hmm. how you allocate it. I, 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 it's how you look at it. Mm -hmm. I think I, I'm sure you'll be able to substantiate 5000 very easily, uh, but I, I just think this is a, a worthwhile expense. Linda, Linda, I think you have uh, some uh, knowledge of these types of... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had to do it for Maine West um, to the Des Plaines Public Library, and actually they full-fledged gave us um, uh, library cards through... Oh, no, sorry. Through um, the four years while the kids are in school, they didn't even uh, just portionately put it to um, just the COVID time. They actually extended it for um, their whole time at Maine. Oh, Linda, does I'm Maine sorry, need to pay for that? Hmm. Linda, um, I don't know if you can hear us, but we can't um, hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh. Can you, oh, there you go. It's my yes. internet. I'm sorry. It's my oh, internet. Okay. I can hear you now. Yeah. I just think as at this time, I think we all need to pull in and do our part as a community. And um, I just feel that we all need to just, just, you know, support every single person within our community and however we can. Uh, I'm not sure what part you had, which part I dropped off at, but we, but I did um, have to, I did have to, um, as the district lead librarian, uh, fight for our unincorporated area with just Blaine's public library. And uh, I had said that they actually um, didn't propose just to give it to the students um, in that area for the COVID time, they actually propose to do it for their four years while they are attending Maine West High School. So they even went above and beyond. 
Okay. So, thank you. All right. So, can I ask a question? Think, do we have a motion on the table, Susan? Can you do remind not. me? To... Nobody ever made a motion. Okay. Can All I right. Uh, Linda, Wait, Wait, Diane is asking a question here. Okay. Thank you. Um, no, I I think we should just go ahead and do this a six months and only um, about. And also, don't I recall that the way this all started was because the principals approached us, didn't they? Superintendent, yes. Yeah. Okay, the superintendent. So um, I I don't think it's necessary to do that. I think we can handle this for six months. And so I will make a motion to approve closing. No. Um, extending I have a question. the expiration date. Okay, uh, extending the expiration date of new library cards for unserved areas to March 31st, 2021, I believe yes. is what the uh, motion should be corrected to say. Okay, all right, Diane, thank you for the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Linda seconded. All right, uh, is there any further discussion? I have a question mm -hmm. for Linda. Linda, yes. um, the agreement between Main West and the Displays Library, was that funded by uh, Main West? No. There's no fund. It's just an agreement. The only agreement is is if a student does not uh, bring back any materials, like say that they took out six books and for some reason they didn't bring them back, we would be, um, District 207 would be responsible for that money. That is the only okay. thing, stipulation on that agreement. That, um, however, you know, we've never, I think, uh, and all the time we've had an agreement with Park Ridge, um, we've, I think we've paid for one book and it's been a year. I mean, we've okay. had an agreement since I've been there 19 years. Okay, then I must have been, I must have misunderstood. I thought that one of the main schools had a financial agreement uh, for their students to participate in a, a library. Okay, well, thank you for that clarification. <laughs> Carolyn, right. used to be, that was way back when the kids used to have to pay. But it hasn't been since Linda and the head of 207 or whatever displays or whatever made the agreement. And that's been what, two right. years or one year? Um, yeah, no, I thought the agreement was a contract with a fee to it. My mistake. Yeah, no fees, sorry. Yeah, it's just, okay. it's just it's an agreement. Out. The one with Park Ridge, it's, uh, we renew it every three years. Um, the one which explains it's um, for right now it's sounding like it's pretty permanent so really thankful for that sure okay all right then may we have a roll call Susan yes Karen yes Diane yes Patty yes Linda yes Carolyn uh, no motion passes all right, we're on number 11, which is other. Uh, does anyone else have any other business uh, that they need to bring to the board's attention? All right. I have a comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. For me? Yes. Um, you, know, you know what I wanted to mention? Um, I believe it was at the May board meeting. We talked about our um, online board meeting packets and about um, including the documentation that the trustees receiving, receiving their board packets online for the residents to review. And I believe I've seen some documents um, associated with some of the um, board meetings, but my, what, I, what I think um, is happening is the documentation is being included after the board meeting. I was wondering if it could be included before the board meeting so that the residents could review it before the board meeting and be aware of what we're doing as opposed to afterwards. Uh, well, I don't know if that would cause some difficulties. Uh, Susan, can you tell us? It already is. The board packet that Diane puts up, that link that she sends with all of those documents included, that is what the residents have access to as well. So oh, the it's one up that we get uh, the, up online, it's the same one? Yeah. Same packet? Yeah, okay. exactly the same package. 
every once in a while when we were meeting in person, uh, we would have documents that we were passing out in the board meeting. And I think that's what we were talking about more at that time. But, uh, but yeah, no, everything that is in your board packet is available to the residents at all times. Okay, so before the board meeting, they see everything I see. Okay, yep. I just wanted to be sure. All sure. right, thank you for that. All right, um, I want to thank you everyone uh, this evening for uh, um, being prepared for the meeting and we got through the meeting, uh, I think actually in record time. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think this is Pretty close. Uh, the shortest meeting I can recall. Maybe maybe not the shortest, but one of the, one of the shortest. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Patty? Second. Seconded by Linda. All right, uh, roll call. Karen? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Okay, fine. All right, so we will reconvene on the 15th of October. That is a Thursday. And a few days before that, we will get uh, applications from any interested residents who want to serve on the board. And we will be interviewing uh, those individuals that, that evening. Now, as I recall, we do that in a closed session. Is that right, right Susan? Right, that's uh, why it so can't be really, in the webinar form. Right, so there, there won't really be any open meeting that evening because we're just, not going to be yeah just the opening and then you to appoint the person that would have to be an open session at the end of we the could week. do that at the beginning of the next thank meeting, you which that's would be what yes the following week right um yeah if that's the way you want to do it but if you want to have that person in place as a trustee they'd have to be sworn in at the beginning of that meeting and you'd have to have them there you'd have to you, you were talking about letting them know uh, yeah, I think we would uh, let them know. Okay, well, we, we can go into open session for a, a few minutes at the end yep. of the meeting at which we interview people. Yeah, I mean, if we had used just a regular meeting format, then anybody that was still interested at the end could, would be waiting in the waiting room, and I would let them in from the waiting room. So if they want to know at the, at the time, they can come back in. But, okay. you know, with the webinar, there is no waiting room. So okay, can't do it this way. And okay. depending on how many people, who knows how long that meeting. That's for sure. Because you got to be fair when interviewing them all. Yep. As I recall, last year we all had a certain um, packet of questions. Yeah. You know, okay, and you're right. Yes. That's right. Questions. Yeah, I can send out what you did before. I am just realizing, though, that you already voted to adjourn the meeting. And so... <laughs> did we? This is not in the meeting yet. Wow. Well, uh, Can I, do I, I think what I said earlier, Susan, is uh, to ask you to do everything you did last time. So yep. if you would send out this, I believe you sent out suggested questions last time. Yep. And uh, if you would do that again, please, uh, we'll proceed as we did before. Okay. okay. All right. Thank so, you. Uh, we are adjourned now, I believe, okay? Yes. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah, it's a violation. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Susan, Susan, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, we had the shortest executive board meeting last month. Are you still expecting minutes for that? If you recall. I think practically we, yeah, I think since we went in and came out, I think we still have to document it. Okay. All right, I'll get those to you. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.